Hello everybody, my name is Eric and today we're going to be talking about the NPM supply chain attacks, both the most recent one and uh, this one that happened a while ago, because it's all sort of, it's a trend that seems to have started earlier this year in August uh, with some smaller scale supply chain attacks. Then there was this massive one after a well-crafted phishing attack hit Josh Jun, aka Quix, who received an email message that looked quite legit, support at npmjs.help, urging them to update their two-factor authentication credentials before September 10th by clicking on a link. Now it said specifically because you haven't changed your two-factor uh, authentication in a while, we are going to make you do that right now. Now thinking about that, you probably think, well, that's ridiculous. But, as always with phishing emails, there was a very short deadline to urgently update this. Update now. And they did. And as a result, uh, many popular packages were compromised. Anzi regex, anzi styles, backslash, chalk, chalk template, color convert, color name, color string, debug, error x, has anzi, is rayish, proto tinker, wc, supports hyperlinks, simple swizzle, uh, supports color, wrap anzi. All of these were pwned, and they posted, yep, I've been pwned. Two-factor authentication reset email looked very legitimate, only NPM, and they ultimately got their account back, and that was solved, despite being a sophisticated attack that compromised a humongous number of very important packages, the hackers only ended up with a couple thousand in stolen crypto for their efforts. Not a big hit, but then this happened. The Shy Ulid attack, which is named after a fictional sandworm and is a worm itself. It steals developer credentials, uses Trufflehog to scan for secrets. Now, also, just side note, Trufflehog is not malware, but some people have been calling it like it's a malware as a service. We can go see more about Truffle. This is a tool that is designed to be used for you to check your repo for accidentally committed credentials. It's a good tool, but it can also be abused. Now, before we continue, I just wanted to give a quick break for today's sponsor, and then we're going to get right back into this. Vibe coding is eating the world, and CLI coding agents are eating vibe coding. But those security questions, they're not going away. Enter CodeRabbit, the automated code review tool that catches disasters before they ship. With CodeRabbit CLI, the same engine trusted on over 10 million pull requests across 2 million repos, now lives in your terminal. It integrates seamlessly with your CLI agent of choice, delivering line-by-line -line feedback on changes before you commit. It catches hallucinations, logic bugs, security vulnerabilities, missing tests, and performance issues. Then it can automatically pass fixes back to your agent. Want manual control? That's covered too. Terminal native and language agnostic. It does JavaScript, Python, Go, Rust, C Sharp, C++, PHP, Ruby, you name it. Starting is free with generous rate limits for individual developers. Just run the command shown on screen and watch the Kawaii installation process get going. Log in, connect your CLI agent, and ship with confidence. Code Rabbit CLI. Code at terminal velocity, review at terminal velocity. Never let your dating safety app accidentally become a data sharing nightmare because an AI hallucinated a debug endpoint. Thank you to Code Rabbit. Now back to the video. So, yeah, so this is a self replicating worm, which has been relatively uncommon in modern software engineering or software purely because. The original method that most worms spread have become less relevant. Sharing floppy drives, we don't really do that anymore. Directly expose computers to the internet, not unless it's a server, which has happened with Mirai. Well, what this does, it infects, if you are a developer and you download it, it infects all of the NPM repositories you've uploaded. So it can then spread to other developers. This strain has spread quite rapidly and it copies its code, in, or this version did, they later updated it to remove that limit. It also takes the credentials from the user and puts them into a public GitHub repository that includes the word shall halud. That's also why the malware is called that. Now that is a weird step, because by putting it onto a public GitHub, it is immediately open for the taking. It's not just going to be stolen by the malware developers, and there's also a webhook for that purpose, but it can also be stolen by everyone else. Almost harkens back to the old days of malware, which was intended to be more 
destructive than it was uh, profitable. So here is Socket's uh, blog on this. Now, Socket.dev is, to my knowledge, they're not a sponsor. I'm just, I've seen them a couple of times. The leading expertise on software supply chain security. They have plenty of free stuff, as we can see. Uh, they scan, and there's a browser extension, and they automatically, you can just go and you can check your dependencies on their platform. You can go on NPM right now and actually see. You can see that this is safe. So that's what they do. Now, this got far, including CrowdStrike. Yes, the same CrowdStrike that some attribute uh, to causing what is sometimes called the world's largest ransomware attack, where they took down a bunch of computers last year. Uh, their NPM account was compromised by this, uh, compromised Tiny Color and many other packages. Downloads Trufflehog, searches for tokens and crowd credentials, uh, then it validates them, and it gets right to work stealing data. And it uses this workflow file, shyhulid.gam. So noted hordes of these public repositories on GitHub where the data, the stolen data was uploaded, and it would say it was for Shai Hulid migration. I guess this is the migration of your data from you to the threat actors. Uh, or maybe it was just so that it looked a bit more legit. And then there's someone warning about it, saying that companies should search over GitHub to see if any of their employees have a repository. In addition to giving away the secrets, it also makes it easy to see if someone was compromised. The first that seemed to be hit, and then there were a couple of bursts, and then there was the first big one, and then CrowdStrike was hit, and it just kept on going and going. And there were several versions. This is the first one, it, and then version 2, they changed a bit of code to improve. It's kind of weird to see a live malware attack consistently improving and being edited. Then version 3, version 4. They're kind of, it seems like these threat actors might be testing in prod, which is just kind of funny. Revert to a regular repo, and then, and then it stops self-propagating. And a little, it added this post install script that wasn't there originally, saying node will run bundle.js. The bundle.js runs the malware on everyone who installs it. So if you installed a compromised into production, it could still exfiltrating from a production system, if it got installed on a developer's computer, it could get into that and possibly use that as a method of pushing itself to their packages if they have public NPM packages. It really seems like supply chain attacks, both in the developer community and in general, are becoming a bigger problem. This year and last year, to some extent, there was the terrible trading technologies uh, solar, I think that was the solar winds one, that just got so deep. And it's incredibly difficult to deal with because it's not, it's different from the usual method of malware distribution, which is someone downloads something they shouldn't, either by social engineering or just downloading a Fortnite hack. Here, you're not downloading anything you shouldn't. The version has just been updated, and if you weren't paying enough attention, you could get yourself into a lot of trouble. Now, let's take a look. This is a massive file. I do appreciate uh, another thing about I like about this site is that they do make the samples and stuff easily available, so you can see it. You can see, okay, this is looking really obfuscated, but we can see see some things that I don't like. AWS SDK, yeah, which is, isn't that obfuscated. You can see uh, targets to GCP. You can see some URLs in here. See tons of references to things like Secret Manager, which you you do not want. You don't want your UI label tool to suddenly be downloading. Uh, and doing all this stuff to your secrets. We can see actually here, we first of all, we see the known malware, which I believe is their humans flagging it. But we also see with their automated indicators of compromise here. Socket has said, this is malware. So they, once again, Socket, not a partner of the channel, although they certainly, maybe we could do that at some point. I, I, I quite like what they're doing, just giving them a shout out for that. That's going to be all for me for now. This is a scary trend. It's like, I would usually say the thing I find scariest in malware is rats, but this is another one because it requires, it doesn't have the same wrongdoing aspect. You know, you can just be using your system like you normally would. It's very hard, especially if you use TypeScript or Rust or something like that to avoid external dependencies. So I think it's just, it's going to have to, security is going to have to catch up and 
we're learning package managers, even with legit packages, are not impervious to security problems. So that's going to be all for me for now. Please do let me know in the comments below what you think about supply chain security or anything else in the comments below. Bye!